Today I'm going to show you how to mount a new set of frames onto your hockey boots. And usually you'll take this to your local hockey shop and they'll charge you anywhere from $30 to $50 dollars to have it done. But if you like doing things yourself, you'll realize it's really not that hard with a few things from the hardware store and a drill. Having custom mounted skates means that you can have a greater choice of boot and frame combinations. You may like a certain brand of boot that's not available for inline skates or you like a certain chassis that's not sold with a boot or perhaps you want the exact same boot for inline and roller hockey. So with these reasons it makes sense to go custom. So in my case I like having the same boot for roller hockey and ice hockey. So it makes it easier for me to transition between the two sports. I decided to do this myself because sometimes the hockey shop doesn't do it properly. It's kind of hit and miss. It really depends on who's doing it that day. Sometimes the chassis is not properly centered. So to avoid this, what I'll usually do is take off the original blade holder on a skate myself and, uh, and I'll mark it up exactly where I want the new frame and then I hand it over to the hockey shop. But that basically means that you've done half the work already for them and, and you've done the most difficult part of the process which is to take off the frame. Drilling new holes and mounting them on the, new, on, on the skate actually isn't that hard. So before we remove the blade holder, we're going to find out what the center line is for the boot is. So the easiest way would be to find out where the center of the blade is and make a mark at the base of the boot at the heel and at the front as you can see I already made the marks there there's that black mark there and out and then when we take off the boot we can just draw a line between the front and the back and that will be the center line for aligning with the wheel the wheel line of the new frame this is very important because balance is everything in skating in order to take off the original blade holder or chassis we use several methods if you want to keep the original hardware then you want to be careful when removing the rivets I usually drill out the prongs in the rivets for the the back so these four here and also these these four in the front all you really want to do here is drill the prongs off of the rivet and not drill into the footbed so don't go all the way through the other ones in the in the toe are really hard to get at so in order to get these off I usually use a chisel to just stick the chisel in there and just kind of use a hammer and hammer it out and it works pretty well. Um, the hardest ones to remove would be these copper headed rivets. These are probably the most difficult and but the easiest way would be to use a chisel as well. Just stick the chisel in there and hammer away at it or if you want to make it easier get a Dremel tool and Dremel off the little piece at the, at the top there and it should just pop right out. Once you have all the rivets out, the blade holder just comes off easily and then we're going to go to the next step. So what we're going to do next is draw a line from the front of the boot all the way to the back. This will mark the center as well as making another mark from the midway point of the boot as well, marking the center. So I just draw a line perpendicular to the to line here. And you want to line up your new frame 
I like to put a little sticky tape on the frame itself. This way, I can put it where I want and not have it fall off. And once you put it on, what you want to do is get a marker of some sort and just put a little dot where you uh, where you want it. And then you want to make like an X, and that's where you're gonna drill it, right? So I'm gonna be mounting these particular boots with uh, the sprung frame. They have independent suspension. They're different from what I usually use. I usually use a fixed frame like the Sure Grips, and they work for me. But I thought I'd give these a try. What I usually use is a 532 uh, drill bit, and I'm using this Black and Decker screwdriver slash um, drill and it's not very fast so you don't really need a fast drill or anything and this is battery powered so I got it for about $15 at Walmart and that's all you really need so you want to make sure that you do go in straight So this is what you'll need to buy at the hardware store. You'll need some 632 T-nuts. You'll need some 632 um, screws or bolts and you'll want them in two lengths. Half inch and three eighths of an inch. The half inch ones goes in the back and the, sh the shorter three, three eighths of an inch go in the front. So you'll need uh, four half inch ones for the back per skate and you'll need six three-eighths ones for the front per skate. So that's basically what you need to buy from the hardware store. It's also a good idea to get some thread lock. Thread lock will uh, prevent your screws from loosening up when you skate. So it's a good idea to put some. Uh, just put a little dab of it on the end of the screw before you screw it into the, the T-nut. And on the inside, that's where the T-nuts go, as you can see. Um, the screws come up. The T-nuts go into the bed, the foot bed, and then the screws grab onto it and hold the uh, chassis in place. The T-nuts we're going to use have these prongs that stick up. And the thing is, they're, they're too long. So what you're going to have to do is get some pliers and just um, break them off. Just bend them back and forth and they'll eventually fall off. And there you have it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's good that it's a little jagged because when you put it into the boot, it will have something to like, grip into the footbed to, uh, so it doesn't spin while you're, while you're screwing in the, uh, the screw from the other side. The screws for the back part of the sprung chassis actually needs to be about uh, 5 8 and of course I bought half inch ones or which are four eighths essentially um, so they're the half inch ones are too short so what I did was I took a three quarter three quarter inch screw which is six eighths I guess and then I'd cut them down just by one eighth so it's five eighths and they are perfect for the back of the uh, sprung chassis so in order to cut down the screw what you need is this device here. This is a crimper slash screw cutter. And what you do is you put the screw into this. There's actually a hole here that says 632. I'm not sure you can see that, but this, you screw the screw into it, right? And then you just clamp down and it'll cut. It'll trim the, the screw or bolt for you to the right length. So that's basically what I did. I couldn't find any screws that were 5 8 So I had to make my own. So I got 3 quarter inch and made them into 5 What I usually do is take a T-nut and a screw that is about an inch long. This is quite long. This is not the one that you're going to you know, use um, eventually. You're, you're probably going to use a, a shorter screw. Uh, but this, what this does is using a longer screw, it helps you uh, pull the T-nut into the the hole and once it's into the hole you could take out the long screw and then put in a proper length one so here are the sprung chassis mounted onto the boot as you can see it's not really hard to swap out your own frames 
So if you like doing things yourself, this is a very re rewarding project and you don't need an expensive riveting machine or anything like that. And it's just as strong, if not stronger, than the steel rivets you get um, if you had it done at the hockey shop. And as an added bonus, since you're using these screws and T-nuts, you can easily switch out your uh, inline chassis and put in your ice chassis whenever you need to. So that's it for this how-to video and I'll see you next time.